Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rant, part of Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go subscribe and hit that bell. We appreciate all of you. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast and on X at Come On Now Pod. Let's jump right in. The Los Angeles Lakers hired JJ Reddick. Sloppy seconds. It's very rare that the public knows about coaching decisions in which a coach declines a job. And that is what happened here with Danny Hurley saying no to the Los Angeles Lakers. Reddick is now the guy who's publicly known as Sloppy Seconds. Sorry, LeBron James hired his new secretary. J.J. Redick, to assist him in coaching the Lakers. He signed a four-year deal, long enough to not be dead wood, but short enough so that when they fire him at the end of this year or next year, the buyout won't be so bad to absorb, since clearly the Lakers are budget-restricted as a franchise, since they didn't blow Danny Hurley's socks off when he spurned them to return to UConn. This hiring is embarrassing. This is the Los Angeles Lakers. But what's new? The Lakers have been embarrassing themselves since the termination of Frank Vogel two years ago after coaching them to the 2020 NBA championship in the bubble. The executives for the Lakers, Rob Palenka and Jeannie Buss, have allowed LeBron James to run their franchise. He basically pulls the strings to his puppets. He's been doing so since his arrival in La La Land. If not for the 2020 bubble run, a run that many people believe had it been in a real situation of playing home and road games, many people believe, even though the Lakers were playing exceptionally well that year and were the top seed in the West at the time it went to the bubble, a lot of people believe that the Clippers would have taken the Lakers out in the playoffs with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. But credit to the Lakers, they were the mentally tougher team in the bubble, and they were able to advance to the West and then match up with the Miami Heat. And, of course, luckily for the Lakers, the Miami Heat lost their starting point guard and starting center in Goran Dragic and Bam Adebayo in the first game and eventually won that series 4-2. to But if not for the 2020 bubble run, the LeBron James experience would be viewed as a complete catastrophe, a catastrophic failure. Only because of 2020 is it viewed as only a partial failure. Consider the fact that outside of that bubble run, the Lakers have never been better than a seven seed when they've made the playoffs. LeBron gets all the credit. He takes none of the blame as he tries to manipulate the Lakers into making moves to ensure his son, Bonnie James, is on the team next year despite what Rich Paul puts out into the ethosphere, claiming that LeBron doesn't care, this, that, and whatever. LeBron cares. We know he does. The Lakers were floundering two years ago. Rob Palenka makes some deals. He gets D'Angelo Russell in, and the team starts to play better, if you recall. And LeBron was nursing an injury during that time. Of course he presumed that they'd probably continue to play poorly. But instead, they started playing well, and they turned it around magically without the king. And then, of course, here comes LeBron, just in time for the playoffs, just so he could take the credit of the run when everyone knows the team was playing a lot more loosely and playing a lot more relaxed, and ball was flowing. They managed to make a run to the Western Conference Finals while avoiding a slew of injured players. Let's remember their run. There were injuries all over the place that set up their run to get them to Denver, the one team that wasn't injured, only to be swept by the Nuggets and what people called a competitive sweep. Let anyone get swept that's not named LeBron James and is considered embarrassing. 
But when it's LeBron, it's never an embarrassment. It's a competitive sweep. One would have thought that Darvin Ham would be safe. Not with LeBron there. They win the NBA Cup, that joke of a tournament in the, in the beginning of the season. It's not even the middle of the season. It's a beginning of the season tournament. One game attached, one game semi, one game final. But let's be real, there were a lot of injuries in that situation as well. That amazing trophy of nonsense that allowed LeBron to feel like he accomplished something. With two weeks to go in the regular season, the Lakers were the 10 seed. LeBron was highly upset that more moves weren't made to make his team better. They ended up the eight seed, and they won the play-in, which probably was the worst thing that they could possibly do. To move into a seven seed, match up with the Denver Nuggets, and the opportunity to get spanked by the Nuggets again. Darvin Ham is fired as his Players were sabotaging him publicly from the beginning of the calendar year. LeBron made comments. AD made comments. It was always someone else's fault. It was never theirs. They never owned anything. These guys are above reproach. LeBron James even starts a podcast with J.J. Redick three months ago. Convenient, huh? Kind of embarrassing if you ask me, because you're just, the, the writing's on the wall. There's no doubt, Red, there's no doubt, listen, there's no doubt Reddick's a great basketball mind, and he does a great job, you know, he's done a great job at first take, he's done a great job, even since he's been in the booth, albeit him covering LeBron James games to me was always a conflict of interest, because it was pretty much assumed that he'd become the next head coach when he took on these roles and had took on this uh, podcast with LeBron. And even though he said some completely ridiculous crap about basketball and insulted former grades and called them janitors and bus drivers and all that other shit, he is really a smart guy. He knows the game. But let's be real. He's not the coach. He's an assistant. He carries the clipboard. He carries the bags. And if they fail, he'll get blamed. Not LeBron. That said, let's take a look at JJ. No experience coaching outside of little kid basketball. I understand there have been coaches who have in the past never served an assist as an assistant, never had any coaching experience. But let's look at where they got these jobs, man. Orlando, Jersey, Golden State, Brooklyn, Chicago, Indiana, Boston, Dallas, Denver, Phoenix, the Clippers. But let's look at the results. First off, the Lakers were also in that list, and I didn't mention them. Magic Johnson took over as a coach for the Lakers for about 10 seconds and went 5-11 and in 16 games. Magic found out that coaching wasn't that damn easy. But he's Magic Johnson. He has a, a, a tie to the Lakers, right? But let's look at these other coaches. Derek Fisher was 40-96. and 96. Danny Del Negro was 86 and 90. Doc Rivers, 176 and 178. ML Carr, who coached the Celtics during a bad time in Boston, 48 and 116. Quinn Buckner, 13 and 69. Paul Silas, 78 and 168. Really, the only two good coaches, or three, really three, were Steve Kerr, who inherited what Mark Jackson had done with Steph Curry. And then, of course, Larry Bird, who led the Pacers to an NBA Finals appearance. And then, of course, Mark Jackson himself, who helped build up, you know, the Steph, Clay Thompson duo and the Splash Bros. But largely, most of these men have failed, and they failed miserably. And generally speaking, they're also point guards. Reddick is not a point guard, but I don't think that matters. I think he's a smart guy. So, But generally speaking, a lot of these guys are point guards. But most of them failed, and they failed badly. And they failed because, one, they didn't have the talent to be successful. They're taking over. Generally, when you, you take over a team and you're taking over, you're taking over a bad team, it's void of talent. That's not the case here. The issue here remains and has been and will continue to be LeBron James. It will not change. 
none of these coaches have had to deal with LeBron James, who has a history of having his coaches fired. The only one who he couldn't get shown the door was Eric Spolster with the Miami Heat. And Spo has since led the Heat to six finals appearances in 15 years. Everyone else has been fired. Redick has put his future in the coach in coaching in the hands of LeBron. Where is Steve Nash right now? Will he ever coach again? He trusted Kevin Durant only to be undermined by that entire team over, over and over again. KD called for Nash to be fired only to act shocked when it happened. <laughs> Imagine that shit. Fire him, fire him, fire him. Oh, we fired him. Oh, what, what did you do? What do the Lakers truly hope to accomplish here? That's the question. What is their, what are they, what are they hoping for? Because if their expectation is a prayer run to the finals, it won't happen. You need to lower the expectations, especially fans. Fans have to truly lower the expectations because the Lakers aren't that damn good. They weren't good last year. They weren't good this year. They weren't good the year before. They have not been good since that bubble run. That team was actually good. These last three have been bad to mediocre. So what do you think is going to happen all of a sudden? LeBron's never going to win another ring. Not as long as he thinks he's the guy. At best, this team is a six seed. You can only blame everyone else for so long. He won't win a ring again. It's that simple. Not with the Lakers. Not as long as he requires being the focal point of a franchise rather than a secondary piece. He's not the A side. He might be the A side in ticket sales, but he's not the A side when it comes to production and winning. His numbers today, look, he had a really good season overall last year. Shooting percentage was over 50%, efficient, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, LeBron is deficient in numerous areas, largely defense. He takes plays off. He's just gotten, he's older. You can't expect him to do what he did 10 years ago. But yet he has created this facade that he's supposed to still be able to do that. And he knows he can't do it. So no matter how much he says AD needs to be the guy, AD will never be the guy as long as LeBron is his teammate. He defers to him. It's just the way it is. What happens if the Lakers start off 15 and 15? Do they start talking about Reddick to the media as they did with Ham? Do they start sabotaging him and undermining him publicly to the media? The Lakers were a premier franchise under Jerry Buss. Under his daughter, Jeannie, they are a disaster. If not for the 2020 season, this is a franchise that has missed the playoffs in seven of the last 12 seasons. In the four other seasons that they made the playoffs, they were the seven seed. The lone success was the 2020 bubble season, which many people feel is a tainted title. And they're now on their eighth coach in 12 years. They had to eat crow when Hurley publicly shamed them and made taking a job with the Lakers tantamount to getting a colonoscopy while awake. It's painful as hell. So why would Reddick want this job? Well, it's the Lakers. They still are the Lakers. But his contract is not one of profound belief. It's one of a project. It's one of an experiment, one they hope works because realistically, they know it probably won't because LeBron has made coaching him bordering on the impossible at this point in his career. He thinks he knows more than everyone. And he makes a point to tell you. No one would ever argue LeBron James's basketball knowledge. He somehow has a, a memory like a recording because he's able to repeat what happened play after play after play after play in post-game press conferences. But he doesn't know everything. And he's not watching himself play while he's playing. That's the job of a coach and a coaching staff. But if Reddick thinks he is really the coach of this team and he thinks LeBron James is his friend, he'll find out soon enough that's not the case.
It just isn't. The issue with this entire deal is that Reddick could be decent. But LeBron will still not be happy and push him out the door as he has done to so many before him. The other possibility is Reddick could be absolutely freaking terrible and not pick, make it past year one. And the Lakers are looking for a new coach next spring. What are your thoughts? Do you think Reddick is set up for failure? Do you think he's a mere puppet to King LeBron? Do you think the second things go wrong, and they will, that LeBron will throw him under the bus and start blaming him for the failures? Or do you think Le that J.J. Reddick will surprise people and have some level of success? Success is not simply winning a championship, but simply making the playoffs. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and ring that bell. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast and X at Come On Now Pod. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now the Podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.